keep the main where it is on the port side and drive the jib over to the starboard side and go wing and wing. Maybe we can do it. Let's give it a shot. We're going to do 30 degrees to port, 10, 20, 30. Uh. Wing and wing, baby. And now we're going way more to the east, getting back on that run line. Time to starboard. No, I can't do it. No, not without a whisker pole. All right, turn to port. Get that jib to fill again. Go east for a bit. What the fuck? The batten got caught on the shroud. That's not good. Okay, so now we're wing and wing. We're going too far to the east and our speed has not increased. Sometimes it dips under five. Uh, generally it's above five. This is even more uncomfortable though. I don't like this. All right, so what you gonna do? Go like this for a while? Yeah, why not? We'll make some easting. Everything seems stable for the moment. That jib is having a really hard time staying full. I keep turning more and more to port. Now we're going way, way, way to port. Ah, to prevent it from flogging, it was flogging pretty bad. Ah, there it goes again. Ah. Don't like it. Don't like it, not worth it. Okay, it's time to jibe. Things have been going pretty well, going wing and wing for the past few hours. You can see here that we jibed and we've been going this way and now we gotta go this way because we're getting too close to that island, which is Inish Boffin. And if we turn to starboard, the main will stay on the same side and the jib will have to come over. And then we'll have both the main and the jib on the same side, and I'm not sure how well that's gonna go, but let's find out. We jibe the main somehow. All right, that's over. Now you steer. The wind must have come up. I'm gonna get us on course by hand. <clears throat> and we do 240. Start, no, 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 the other way, the other way, duh. All right, I'm just too tired. Let's try 250. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on the wheel. I can feel it, it's too much. Uh, 220. And we do 210. 210, 210. Hey, 210 is nice. Can we maintain 210? Can we maintain 200? Okay, should start a flog. Both sails on the port side. 
fold heading autopilot. <clears throat> I got it, I got it. Uh. <clears throat> okay, both sails are on the port side. Uh, we're going dead downwind, healing quite a bit more than before, but we are making good speed, seven knots. The direction is acceptable. Nothing's flogging. We're healing a lot more to port, of course. The good news is that the weather report shows that the wind is going to do nothing but decrease. So as we head into night, I'm not worried that we're going to get slammed with like a squall or, or steadily increasing wind speeds until it becomes unmanageable. It's just going to get lighter uh, by tomorrow. Tomorrow, midday, tomorrow afternoon, yeah, close to our arrival time. It's just going to be like this. Autopilot does not seem to be having any problems with this. Downwind, mainsail up configuration. We'll just keep on doing this until we got to jive again hours from now. Okay, it's almost sunset. And it's rolly as hell and not fun, but you gotta eat. What? I said it's rolly as hell, but you gotta eat. Here we go. First, uh, make the rice. So what are we making? Orange chicken, Cajun chicken, chicken, broccoli, and mushroom. Yeah, that is it. All right. Broccoli, onion, mushrooms. Mushrooms. Broccoli. Do we have a bell pepper? Gotcha, thank you. <sighs> All is well. Another ship. Closest point of approach, 4.7 miles. It's time to turn on the tricolor light. Set it to tricolor. Mo. We're just waiting on the rice. Then I'm gonna bring you some food, okay? You hanging in there? Ah, I'm fine. Oh! Jesus, that boat's going right into the wind. Must be some big power boat.
Here you go. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You got a drink? What is this? Chicken with all the veggies that we had. Soy sauce, honey, garlic, ginger. Okay. How's that? Good, good. So when we approach the coast, mm -hmm. that part where we got to go in between the uh, island and the mainland, it'll be 11 o'clock when we get there. So we'll have no problems getting into the marina before sunset. Okay. Do you need anything else before I go? No, I'm good, thank okay, you. Okay, you good? All right. Rolly. Huh? Rolly. Rolly. You want the light on or off? Um, you can leave it on. Okay. See. Thank you. Okay, I'm going back up. I love you. Oh. So it's interesting when the when the sun just came up, when the sun just started to rise, the wind died. I turned on the engine, and about half an hour later, the sun's up, and uh, so is the wind. The wind's back. So I turned off the engine, put out the jib. Now, should I? Uh, I think I'm gonna put up the main as well, just to give us a little bit of additional speed to ensure that we arrive uh, at the marina uh, as early as we can before sunset. We're just making four and a half to four and a half to five knots right now but I think if I get the main up then uh, maybe we'll we'll do five to six or more I hope here we go we got a heck of a sunrise check that out you see what I see my god clouds god rays <laughs> looks amazing oh all right let's do this Ooh. hate raising the main dead downwind see how this goes did it before I should be able to do it again oh duh of course it might help I'm gonna do this Reef main raised on a broad reach point of sale. I'm tired. Uh. that would help. It feels like the one's come down a little bit since I put the main up. I'm still making over five knots so at least we're not running the engine. ETA at the destination waypoint is two o'clock to four o'clock. At this point we'll have to motor anyway. We'll have to take all the sails down. That's waypoint nine. ETA at waypoint 9 is 12.30. Yeah, that looks fine. Alright. Hope we get some Wi-Fi soon. Or cell, cell service. Well, we were doing steady 5 above 5 knots for only about half an hour. And now the wind is started to decrease again and we are between four and five 
with the jib out and a double reef main up and going dead downwind. I would continue like this if we had the luxury of time, but we have to get to the marina before sunset, before they close, and Mo just lost a filling in her tooth, so we need to find a dentist as soon as possible. So I'm gonna start the engine. <laughs> Finally just took all the sails down and now we're motoring. Eight hours of motoring to uh, Dingle. It's been a great sail. Just, woo, great speed, great wind, a double reef main up and a full jib out. Wing and wing for a little while but then I put them both on one side and we just had no problems with that and maintained like six to seven knots all through the night before sunrise I had to jive I should have filmed it but I didn't I brought the preventer in and then I sheeted the main in all the way turned on the autopilot and we did the jive and I brought the jib over to the other side and then I let the main out on the other side and put the preventer back out on the other side and we did that for like an hour and a half and then the wind died. <laughs> uh, then the sun is up. It's coming up. Welcome to a brand new day. We're gonna be in Dingle soon. It'll be good. Dean is gonna be here in like four days. We're really cutting it close, but we've got a big long list of things we gotta do in Dingle before we can go and hopefully we can go soon as in we have a weather window because it would be awful if Ana gets his two and a half weeks to sail with us shows up and there's no window so really hoping we find a nice weather window we're going to come down here through there and into Jingle Harbor right here. There's current in here and I actually don't know what it's doing right now. The chart book said it's in large part driven by wind. Looks like we've got rain over there. It's really rolly where we are right here. It looks less rolly further forward, but that may be an optical illusion. Five and a half knots. Coming down here through this area with all the tidal stream warnings. Out and around the south and over into Dingle Harbor. Of course, this here to that waypoint is 157.2. You can see it right there. It's pretty convenient. Oh, thank God we're riding the current. If it was like this, the other way around, it would not be possible for us to get through. We'd have to go all the way around those islands which would which add so much time to our trip that we probably wouldn't get in before sunset but the gods are with us the current is with us or at least it's not against us it's just bouncy as hell but so far all is well we got a boat out here he's going nine knots I wonder if I'm gonna see him in which case I will attempt to pass port to port because that's what we do uh, Mo made me a cup of coffee. Half of it is spilled on the solar panel. It's so bouncy. Check out that island and those very large, nice houses. Can you imagine living on an island like that, in a big house like that, where there's no light pollution and it must be super quiet and there's no big grocery store or a hardware store or nothing. You gotta get everything from the mainland. What is life? like on that island. Some of them are actually ruins from long ago. Huh. I don't know. Well, we're at the narrowest point, pretty much. Oh, and I'm going too far to port. Don't want to do that. Uh, I've just got to watch out for this five foot mark right there. We got cell phone reception. Mo's getting on the internet and finding a dentist in Dingle and making like an emergency call. 
because on this voyage she lost a filling inside her tooth. There's no pain, but we can't sail to Portugal without that fixed. So she's, she's calling the dentist to tell him it's kind of like an emergency as we can't go to sea and we're on a schedule. So hopefully she gets an appointment like tomorrow or even tonight, you know. Conceivably, we get into the marina at 3.30, tie up, and she runs to the dentist to get that fixed. We have a big long list of things we need to do here in Dingle, and not a whole lot of days to do it. We have three days, three full days before Ana gets here. And Ana's only got two and a half weeks to help us sail to Portugal, so we'll want to leave as soon as possible. And it's all about the weather, you know? Worst case scenario, we don't have a window and we run out of time uh, you know we can't go unless we have a window a safe weather window just have to wait until it arrives and hopefully the timing will will work with Ana's schedule whatever happens it's very important to me that you know Ana enjoys his vacation time he's taking vacation from work so it's like a, you know big deal i'm honored that he would want to spend his vacation time helping us sail 700 nautical miles to portugal and you know it could be, could be a rough trip who knows but he's the man he's gonna help i gotta figure out provisioning i gotta figure out meal planning that's a big thing for me because i usually do all the cooking whenever we go offshore and uh, on long trips I, I always put a lot of effort into like pretty much planning out every meal breakfast lunch and dinner uh, every day at sea is made by me and is a warm healthy home cooked meal and so I gotta figure out the meals and then I gotta figure out the provisions and then we have to get them what else do I gotta do I might as well go through my list secure the ship's VHF wiring at the dinette because we don't want a replay of what happened when we left Scotland with losing our ability to see AIS targets and that wiring needs to be secured better. We need to activate the Iridium Go so that we can get weather reports when we're offshore and out of range of cell phones. We need to clear space for Ana's stuff. I need to install fans in the salon and the aft cabin and the forward head. There have been fans there before, but they're not operational right now. I gotta get them fixed and working. Ana will need one above his berth in the salon. I need to do a lot of sewing. I need to sew the enclosure zipper that's coming apart. I need to sew the stack pack app and the canvas is breaking apart there. I need to do some mending of the lines bag and the furling lines bag on the starboard side. We need to get a new USA flag that's a little smaller because the big one hits the hydro vein. Speaking of which, I need to get the new vein from Hydrovane. It's in Dingle. They shipped it overnight and make sure it works on our Hydrovane installation. I need to go through the rig and make sure it's okay. I need to install a brand new Windex at the top of the mast. So hopefully we get a really calm day and I can just climb up there on the steps and install the new Windex. Install a new GPS antenna for our Garmin chart plotter at the dinette because the old antenna busted. Need to get fuel. Those are the big ones, I guess. So well, that's what's going on in the next three days. <laughs> uh, be glad to get to port. I haven't slept for more than 15 minutes since we left 36 hours ago or so because it has been a rough trip. It has definitely been bouncy as hell. It was all dead downwind or you know broad reach but you know the run line is dead downwind and we had to go way way to the uh the west to be on a broad reach but kind of on the verge of luffing at times we we're wing and wing at other times we were able to do okay with both sails on the same side and it was it was you know when, at times it was windier than forecast and the sort of way Mo and I operate is where like in the rough stuff if there's only one of us that can be on deck it's gonna be me 
and this whole sale was kind of rough stuff. But the nice thing is that the majority of of our time at sea is not in rough stuff, the vast majority, and most fine in those conditions. And the, she'll do like eight hour watches, 10 hour watches while I just sleep. That's kind of how we work. So I'm tired. I've never slept for more than 12 minutes in the past 36 hours. It'd be nice to sleep for more than 12 minutes. All right, let's get there. Dingle on our way. Okay, so we just came around. It's five feet right over there. There's an anchorage right there. Recommended anchorage and 35 feet and or maybe less right there off the beach. But we are gonna go to Dingle over here and on this heading basically for nine, 10 nautical miles, and we've got wind off the port beam. So, sail it, put out the jib, turn off the engine. Could do, could do. How about we give the engine a break? 4.7, 4.4, I am now in neutral. All right, four knots, four knots. Maybe a little bit less is what we can do with just a jib up and I don't want to deal with the main. So we'll run with reduced RPMs, not run the engine so hard, get some assistance from the jib. I wonder how much fuel we're going to have to get. The last time we refueled was in Stornoway and since Stornoway we sail to a bunch of places in Scotland and then a couple of stops in Ireland did the whole west coast yeah wonder how much fuel will we take we'll find out so I see a boat in the distance looks like he's headed towards us and he has no AIS transponder no AIS nothing Can that be like cops or military yes it's a big long fast rib with no AIS so I wonder if we get boarded. Right over there is a massive cave. And I think it goes in quite a ways because it just turns into total black when you look into it. I would love to get the rib going and come out here and check out that cave. What's the deal? Tomorrow, 11.30. Woo! Yes! Bam! Well, apparently we came to the right place, eh? Yeah, well, it's an emergency. I'm on a ship and I'm yeah. going out on Saturday. Push everybody else off the schedule. <laughs> and we got an emergency. Sorry, Linda, you want your teeth whitened? Um, Another day, maybe. A mariner needs our assistance. She is about to go back out to sea. She's about to go lay down her birth or bed. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't want me to come up at all during the... <sighs> the sailing. I kept asking if you're okay. You kept saying yes, yes, I'm fine. No, it didn't really make sense. Uh, like, it was just too windy and the whole the whole sailing downwind situation was too uh, maybe precarious. Maybe a little bit that way, got a boy coming up. 10 degrees to port. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is beautiful. We are sailing on a beam reach. We've got all this land protecting us, so there's not much fetch, and it's nice and smooth. Yeah, yeah. It's a little different than going dead downwind offshore in stronger winds. So Mo is calling the marina, and I am putting out the fenders. I don't know which side to put them out on yet. So I'm just putting them on deck. <clears throat>
Okay, we got a bow line, stern line, spring line that goes forward. And we've got the red line set amidships. What? We have the propane on and the burner turned on, and nothing is like. Are you trying to kill us? I'm in trouble now. Yeah, I don't know why I always leave the solenoid switch on for the stove when I'm done with it. Mo does not like that, and for good reason. You don't need those. Wow, look at those rocks. That looks cool. Man, I want to go in there with the dinghy. Those are little, little, like, uh, what do you call them? rocks that stick out of the ocean right down there that looks super cool oh, i want to go check it out in the dinghy beautiful day after a good sail in terms of we didn't have to run the engine too much ah, want to check out those caves man so it's pretty tight navigation coming in. You gotta watch the buoys. Starting with this green on starboard, and then red and green here, and then 285.9 degrees to here between those two, and then down this channel between the red and green there. All right, let's start running ground. Bearing 018. It's really important because it's like one foot depth yeah. on either side of the channel. <laughs> Greens to port. No, no. Greens to starboard. Red right returning in the United States and green right turning in Ireland and the UK. The opposite. Which is a little confusing, but like driving on the wrong side of the road. There's the red there and the red there like that. I'm gonna hug the greens. But we're about to pass the second green and then it's bearing 001 to the next one. Uh, 001 that's that way and I can't see the other green because it looks like the dredger. <laughs> I, I believe that's the dredger for the channel and it is in front of the green. So we will keep it to starboard. I see the red Keep that to port. Wait, is this stretcher moving? It looks like he's moving. We are slowing down. We will try to stay behind him. I don't have maneuverability here. Well, that was a little nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet these guys are like, whatever, you know. We're working. You figure it out. <laughs> but we're just like fleas to these guys. That's wild. That thing is being pushed by that little boat. I wonder if it's affected by wind much. Okay, most stressful time in the cruising life for me is docking. I hate docking. And I hate docking in places I haven't docked before. You've seen it before. Now you're gonna get some more. All right, we're just gonna go in there and hang a left and figure it out. Wind is coming from there. So it looks like that will blow us onto the pier, I hope. My adrenaline always goes up when we're coming into dock and I don't quite know what the deal is and we gotta figure it out take everything into consideration, the wind, navigation, and whatever else. But I can't quite see it. Can I have the binoculars? So leave all of these blue tipped posts to our port and just go down and there's dockage there? Yes. All right, hope you're right. Does it look like there's room? All right, all right, get ready with your spring line. Wind's right on the nose. Ma, I can't see. You're gonna be able to jump off? 
All right, I'm gonna inch closer. Yay! Amazing we did it without a scratch.